In this video, I will demonstrate two ways to use the radial blur filter in Adobe Photoshop. First, I'll demonstrate a spin blur effect and images that have a clear subject matter or focal point. And I think also if the subject can be connected to movement in some way, those images are very successful, but you can use any image you like. For this effect, you need two copies in your layers panel of the same image if you've made any adjustments to your image, notice that I've clone stamped out the text behind the owl. This means that now my background and my copy layer don't match each other. So if you've made changes, you'll want to go up to layer and then all the way down to flatten image and make just one single layer to work on. And then next, if you haven't made any changes to your image or now you just have one flattened image, you'll want to right click on that layer, duplicate it, and make sure you have the copy layer selected for the next task. So we'll go up to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. And first, the blur method we'll use is Spin. And for quality, you can change it to Best, but Good is just fine. And I have my amount set to 33, but you can set your amount to whatever you'd like to try. You can actually click and grab on the center of this preview box to place the effect in the picture plane on your subject matter. So you'll move it around to where you want it so that it matches your subject matter in your image. And I adjusted it so the blur should just go around the owl. Click OK. Now you will see it apply that effect, but it looks like the center point is just a little to the left of my owl. So I'll undo by clicking Command or Control Z on my keyboard, and then I'll go back up to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur, and then click again in this preview box and move it to wherever you'd like it. Click OK, and now I can see it's a better match right on the center of the owl's face. Next, in your Layers panel, go to the bottom and click this icon to add a mask to that layer. You can see it added a white masked thumbnail in that layer. In your toolbar on the left, click on your brush tool. You can adjust the size of your brush tool to fit the size of your subject matter, but I would set your hardness to zero for a soft edge. And you'll want to make sure this black box is on top of the white. You'll use the brush to reveal more of your subject matter as much as needed. And I suggest brushing in a circle around the subject to match the spin lines that were created by this radial blur filter. You can reveal as little or as much as you like. What you're actually doing with the brush is removing your background copy and revealing the original background layer. So if you're not seeing anything or it's removing everything and leaving just the canvas, make sure the visibility of your original background layer is on. Flip the white box on top of the black if you need to add any of the blur back. For instance, if you took away too much of the blur. And this is an excellent example of the spin method, if I do say so myself. So let's check out the second example. In this image, I'll demonstrate the zoom method. And an image with the subject matter facing straight towards the camera works very well for this effect. But again, you can use any image you'd like. Make sure your layer is flattened, and then right click on the background layer, duplicate it, and then make sure you're on that copied layer. Go up to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. This time let's change it from Spin to Zoom. And change your center point so that it matches your subject's placement in the picture plane. For amount, let's try changing it all the way up to 100. Go crazy with the Zoom Blur. But of course you can set it to whatever amount you like. Once you click OK and the effect is applied, you'll see that it gives the appearance of a quick forward movement. Again, in your Layers panel, click this icon on the bottom to add a layer mask. I still have my brush tool selected. I'll increase the size of my brush to match my larger subject in this image, but I still want hardness at zero. Begin clicking parts of your image to remove the effect. There's no set way to move the brush this time, but my plan is to remove parts of the owl's body while leaving some of the wings, edges, and background still blurred. I'm gonna do this very quickly, but make sure you're doing this with a bit more precision. And once you've got it where you like it, it's time to save your work. 
Go to File, Save As, and I save it in my Creative Cloud Files in a folder for this class, renaming it my first name, last initial, underscore. This is Unit 04.1, and this is our Zoom radial blur. I'll want to make sure to go back and save my other image as Unit 04.1 Spin Radial Blur. I'll save it as a Photoshop file, and then go back to File, Save As, and change it as a JPEG for my web page. And there you have two different ways to use the radial blur filter in Adobe Photoshop.